Alright everyone, welcome back to Random Fixes. So I've made a dozen videos in the past years and in the intro I've used clips like this. So for those clips, I need to rotate my camera at a constant speed, but it's quite difficult to achieve a constant speed of rotation without any help of machines. And the prices for some professional rotation bases can be a little bit on the pricey side, and generally they're going to cost more than 150 bucks. So today in this video, I'm going to make a turning base that has the capability to program the angle of rotation, the speed of rotation, and the time delay to execute the rotation. So without further ado, let's get started. So as usual, I'm going to cover the materials and parts I used for this project. So for the microcontroller, I used an Arduino Nano. It is powerful enough to do some basic calculation and handles display and drive the stepper motor for this project. The movement is handled by the NEMA 17 stepper motor. And this stepper motor will be controlled from a MP6500H bridge from Pololu. I've also tried the ubiquitous L298NH bridge, but it turns out the low efficiency and the lack of current control functionality is really killing the battery. And the H bridge chip itself gets very hot. To get a finer and more smooth movement, I also coupled this stepper motor with our 3D printer gears to reduce the single movement from 1.8 degrees, which is the default from the stepper motor to about 0.1 degrees. I chose a tiny OLED screen to display system information for user interface, a rotor encoder with push button as the input method, and the rotation function of the encoder can be used to select the items from the menu, and the click button can be used to function as the enter key. So it's just like the volume knob for most of the cars. I also include a basic switch for the system to achieve the on-off status. So for the power source, I used a 4 AA rechargeable battery, but pretty much any other form of DC power between 5 to 12 volt should be good for this project. A 3 8 16 volt used for mounting the tripod head and some JB Weld or just some other strong adhesive. And also I 3D printed the boxes and the other stuff to house every component in this project. So one of the most important features for this rotation base is the constant speed of rotation when it mounts cameras. From the spec sheet and some rough calculations, the stepper motor that I have is torquey enough to bring the camera or even sometimes heavier objects in motion. Although the stepper motor does not require a complex feedback control system to track the angles that the user desires, the stepping nature is really killing the smoothness. This motor has 200 clicks for each rotation, which means that a single movement for this motor is already 1.8 degrees. And oftentimes 1.8 degree increment will bring very jerky movement. So in order to get a smooth movement, the stepper motor must move fast enough to form a seemingly smooth action. So I 3D printed some gears to construct a gearbox level for my rotation base. And the speed to reduction ratio is about 20. So from some of my experiment clips, this speed reduction is enough to form some very slow movement smoothly. All the spacing between the poles should be the sum of the pitch radius of two gears that are meshing, and all the gear cads are downloaded from McMaster car. With the jerkiness or the speed problem out of the way, the rest of the hardware box is pretty straightforward. I added some cutouts on the bottom part of the box for switches, screen, and the rotary knob. I also left some screw holes in the box for mounting the Arduino and the H-bridge. On the bottom of the box, I also include some clips to house the battery box that I made earlier. So finally, the top layer. There's only one cutout other than the four screw holes for the movement delivery to the camera or whatever is being mounted there. The 3 8 inch bolt will be sandwiched in between and the threaded end are exposed a little for the tripod to grip on. Once the tripod has been tightened, it can fit snugly. So on the software side, the logic behind the coding isn't hard in any sense. It's just tedious. It does not require complicated control logics like LQR, nor does it require any data structure for fast and efficient computation. I attach interrupts to a channel from the encoder and the button to handle user inputs. While it is straightforward to debounce a button simply by just adding a time delay check, the debounce for the encoder can be done easily this way. If you copy the time delay method from most of the button debounce, noise from the encoder can still come in, and the menu selection can drive you crazy. So instead of setting down with the time gap check method, I use the encoder pattern for debounce. So for the tick to increase, when channel A changes to low, the system must observe a high and a low for the B channel before A bounces back to high, and vice versa for decreasing ticks. And I found this method to work pretty well and robust. 
I wrote several short functions to handle the display, so the logic behind this is that whenever a click interrupts from the button comes in, based on the menu position on the screen, the interrupt service routine will call the corresponding functions dis to display the content and handle the variable update. Although the Arduino IDE already comes with a stepper motor library, but this MP6500 stepper motor driver handles the movements slightly differently. You can check my code on how this works. The, so the full code has already been uploaded to GitHub and you can check them out if you want to learn more about it. And again, if you like to learn more about the theories and mechanics of how this every part works, uh, leave a comment down below and I will do a video about that later. So that's it for today's video. Hope you learned something useful and interesting. If you like it, give it a thumbs up and also check my Facebook page for some updates. Subscribe to my channel if you like the videos that I made. If you have any interesting Mechtronics project idea in mind, leave a comment down below. And I will try to do that in a future video. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.